Kate Brown, the Executive Director at Data Haven. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. And we help people collect and understand uh, millions of data points from around Connecticut. You can compare the mill rate to uh, many other different things, like the length of the roads in your town. And I'm going to speak tonight for myself, not for my employer, but uh, just to, to give you a sense of that. Um, Google Trends shows that we're actually more interested in resolving our differences and in promoting happiness than in the elections. You can see the interest in Nate Silver really dropped off. So I thought election data still was a really good introduction to the subject of well-being and data in terms of you know, the things that we're interested in as a, as a society and a culture. Demographics were very uh, important in the election. Given the crossover here at 800 people per square mile, the Republicans' attack on the extremist urban uh, platform of Obama was not a, not a success. And here at Pecha Kuchinek, we're at the far end of that chart, so we can assume safely that 100% of folks here voted for President Obama. <laughs> now this is, um, I don't think their problem was demographics though. This is a, a real reason for a problem they had. Um, they had a proposal for giving di uh, gifts to dead people. And this shows that the GOP proposal to increase taxes on 20 million children to fund a tax cut of $1.1 million for the top 0.3% of dead people. That was not successful for them. Here's data that also bothered many people. 47% that were takers, totally dependent on government, it was completely false. As we know, the middle class pays more than the top 1%. Some people pay 13%, as we know. The top 1% rates in taxes keep falling uh, in the latest data coming out this week, whereas regressive tax on the lowest um, as a percentage of household budget keeps increasing. And of course, we all saw this other data issue. The first two columns are the aircraft carriers that the United States has, and the second column, the last column there on the right is the aircraft carriers of other countries. So that statement about the Navy being smaller was not very relevant. Um, Romney would have been more accurate if he had said we had fewer horse and bayonet division. Then this is the uh, other problem, data on television. You can see the Fox News chart on the left. It's, it shows that Obama's proposal was to raise taxes from 35 to 39 percent. It looks like they're, uh, you know, increasing the tax rate by a thousand percent. If you actually graph the tax rates since 1920, you can see uh, at the very right hand side there in the orange circle, there's almost no change in that proposal. So maybe we should uh, think about that. Now, in, back to data, even as incomes fall, it's even more important that we look to promote happiness. In 2010, the management teams did a survey uh, to look at what things people like about New Haven, what makes them the most happy, things like parks, retail districts, nearby uh, community activities. In 2012, we did a random control survey focusing on the entire region. We think of New Haven plus all the suburbs. More than half of the population of New Haven works in the surrounding towns. And in any other place in the country, we think of this whole area as one city. And here we have the colonial boundaries, so New Haven's a separate town and so on. We interviewed 1,300 people randomly selected. That's going to be combined with a Yale survey just in New Haven, so we'll have 2,600 responses. And I'm going to share just some very preliminary results. Um, most people in, the, in our region are satisfied, and in New Haven, uh, most people think, a lot of people think the area is getting better, and a lot more I think it's basically staying the same. In New Haven, people are a little more convinced that we're actually getting better. Um, this has to do somewhat with the young population here. And there's more of a disparity in household economics uh, people in the lower 25% of household income are more than twice as likely to, to not be satisfied with the area. So how can we ensure that people feel a sense of progress as, as again, we feel stress on incomes? You know, one way to do this is to look at well-being as being based on community needs. So building happiness, how do we address these needs? Um, these are charts showing uh, people who feel that services are less than good. So in New Haven, government responsiveness, basically the same as the region. Uh, people think their local governments aren't completely responsive. People think uh, police could be doing uh, a little bit better job. The real, the real uh, chart toppers here are things like affordability and employment opportunity. Most people here in the region, when we interviewed them last month, they felt those opportunities were less than good. Um, healthcare, more people think is good or excellent in the region, just as a comparison there. Um, so this is also another measure of well-being. How do people engage in their community? It's very critical. Uh, New Haven and the region, suburbs, they're very similar in that sense. There's new reports showing, you know, the, if you get a 10% increase in people fixing things in their neighborhood, the local unemployment uh, rate in that neighborhood declines by 2.6%. So how do we get more people to feel that they can influence local government, that they use the arts? There's more variation within a city than between one city and any other city. So we need to look at, um, you know, basically things 
of that ether. If you look within the same age and income brackets, um, you'll see New Haven residents are more likely to use the arts, for example. So that's something we could build on here. Uh, basic needs. These are well-being based uh, based on you know people's um, ability to feed themselves and clothe themselves. So we have in that lower 25% of income brackets, there are a lot of people who have trouble providing food or housing for their family, uh, have trouble getting around. Again, if you if you break this down by neighborhood, you get even larger differences. Another thing we could look at well-being based on hope. How are, are people hopeful about their future? Do they think children's opportunities uh, have better opportunities than they do? Uh, most people are pretty optimistic, even if they don't necessarily have a reason to feel that way. The children's opportunities, um, that level has actually declined a lot in the past few decades. People are feeling like uh, their, their next generation might not do as well. The most important measure probably is this well-being based on health. So there's a huge disparity here in people who don't say they're healthy. We have thousands of measures on health, but this is the most uh, important at predicting people's um, future health care costs and their ability to succeed in, in a lot of different things. What if we argued that everyone should have the same opportunity to reach their full health potential? And then, just to conclude, well-being is, again, it's based on opportunity. These are measures that might be relevant to many children in the area. So various just children's success, like uh, their school, whether they have after-school programs or high-speed internet at home. Again, very large differences here. 84% um, of higher-income students go to college, but in the most disadvantaged areas we see across the U.S. that only 5 out of 100 students will graduate from college in our lowest income neighborhoods. Connecticut, of course, has the largest achievement gap in the nation on 7 out of 12 measures in the recent uh, national test. What would Greater New Haven be like if we removed barriers to health, education, and well-being? We should adopt express policies to promote well-being for everyone instead of just debating the typical measures. Thank you.